regular park and recreation committee this Wednesday evening, November 6, 2024. I now call this meeting to order. Well, there would be a gavel, but we'll just get the table. We'll go to innovation and improvisation. Um, with that, I will invite everyone to please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. There is a flag in the corner here. Everyone will take again. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, like, do you think we have, do we have enough chairs for everyone? Do you think so? All right, we're sorting it out. Uh, so with that, I will ask uh, Giovanna to call the roll. Oh, would you have a good chair too? You, Commissioner Donaker? Here. Commissioner Trapp? Here. Commissioner Ocampo? Here. Commissioner Kiapi? Here. Vice Chair Witcher? Here. Chair Fields? Here. Thank you. We do have a quorum for tonight. Wonderful. Um, <clears throat> we are excited to be here in person with options for those who choose not to be in person and to participate virtually. There are several ways to participate. For those attending in person, please complete a yellow request to speak slip and hand it to the coordinated secretary. If participating remotely, use the raise your hand feature in Zoom and you will be called on at the appropriate time. If you call in via phone, please press star 9 to raise your hand and when called upon, press star 6 to unmute. These options for public comment will remain available until I, the chair of this esteemed commission, um, uh, close public comment. So, ah. No, that's okay. Uh, but a good reminder that uh, for those of us, to, uh, for our guests this evening, uh, please do silence your phones. Excellent. Thank you. Um, all right. Very good. So with that, I would love to entertain a motion to approve our consent. So moved. Okay. Please call the roll. Vice Chair Witcher? Aye. Commissioner Trump? Yes. Commissioner Rocampo? Commissioner Kiyoki? Aye. Chair Fields? Aye. Thank you, Motion is signed. Fantastic. All right, next. Members of the public wishing to comment on any item not appearing, to be clear, not appearing on the agenda may address the commission at this time. State law prevents us from taking action on any matter that is not on the agenda. Your comments may be referred to staff for follow-up. Public comment is limited to a total of 15 minutes. However, an opportunity for additional public comment may be provided later in the agenda. And one more note, well, we welcome speakers providing public comment, but please be advised this is a limited public forum. As such, speakers must stay on topic. If speaker is speaking to a particular agenda item as we move through, uh, uh, and if speaking during general public comment, uh, you must address matters within the subject matter jurisdiction of the city. If speakers fail, fail to follow these rules, they will be warned, and if they continue to disregard our rules, their opportunity to speak will be ended. So, with that, I will ask if we have any public comments related to matters not on the agenda this evening. Do we have any speaker slips or hands raised? Do not. We do not at this time, but I will give uh, those in the virtual environment a couple of seconds to raise their hand. Okay, any takers for non-agendized public comment? We do not have any raised hands at this time. Excellent. Do we need more speakers? Are we all out of here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, I will say to the members of the public who are seated, if you could maybe, if you could stand to stand, um, please all, you know, sort it out amongst yourselves. We're a welcoming city here in San Mateo, so, um, you know, be aware of a few standing folks, but um, also, I, I believe this floor is back on the regular, so if you're comfortable staying, uh, so floor, I'll, I'll invite you to do that as well. 
Uh, with that, uh, we will go to item number two, which I imagine is what brings our mini uh, <laughs> this evening, uh, the Beresford Pickleball Pilot Program. A lot of people all together. Uh, so with that, I will call uh, for our interim community services manager, Stephanie Douglas, to present. All right. Well, thank you, Commission, and also thank you, members of the public, for coming out tonight. Again, my name is Stephanie Douglas. I'm the Interim Recreation Manager, and I'm here tonight to talk about the Bearsford Park Pickleball Pilot Program. So before we dive into some of the details about the pilot program, just to give you a little bit of background and history on the program. <laughs> so this all came up when, in 2023, we realized that the Bearsford courts needed to be resurfaced. They were not in the greatest condition, so we went ahead and had them resurfaced, and this brought up some conversations about how to line the courts. So at that time, we did a survey, and we had 555 residents respond to that survey. So here you'll see some of the results of that survey. 60% stated they primarily played pickleball, and again, this is specific to bears for the courts. 37% primarily played tennis. 3% primarily played junior tennis, and you can see peak usage is on the weekends, 72% on Saturdays, 66% on Sundays, and 49% live in one mile of Bearsford Park, and 13% are from outside of San Mateo. So just to give you some reference points as to why we thought it might be a good idea to kind of look into some pickleball courts at Bearsford. Next slide. <laughs> So as you can tell from the survey, 60% of the people who responded said they primarily played pickleball. So there is a strong preference from the pickleball, from the community for pickleball courts. And so what we want to do is a pilot program to really assess court usage between tennis and pickleball. So what the pickleball pilot program is proposing is that we take one of the tennis courts and line them for four pickleball courts. Now, these lines would be on top of the existing tennis line. So we wouldn't be taking away the tennis lines. We'd be putting the lines on top of the existing lines there. Uh, it would be drop and play, no reservations required, at least for the pilot program. We hope for the pilot program to be between six and eight months. And feedback is going to guide our future decisions. So this is, uh, which is why I'm so happy to see all of you here tonight. What we really want to hear is from people about what's working, what's not working, what are the challenges, what are the needs, and that's really going to guide future decisions on pickleball and cemetery. Okay. So again, I talked about drop-in use. We really want to promote flexibility so we can truly see what the usage of the courts are. We are going to be putting up signage uh, for pickleball with rules and player rotation guidelines. We're also going to be focusing on safety and etiquette emphasized for fair play. So as I mentioned, the rules and code of conduct, uh, we're going to have four on four rotation games to 11 points. That'll be part of the rules. No private lessons with the city without having a city permit. That's just a city rule that we have for all racket sports. Uh, use of the paddle rack for queue management. So we will be installing uh, paddle racks on those courts. So you'll be able to put your paddle if you're a pickleball player and see who's in line from that, from how they're listed on there. And again, emphasis on sportsmanship and safety. So again, I mentioned we want to use this time to really evaluate court usage. And so the program evaluation is going to be based on community feedback. At the end of the presentation, I'll, I'll show you an email address. And we'll be blasting that out and having it on A-frame so everybody knows what to do. If they see something that's working or something that's not, you can email that address and provide your feedback. And staff will review findings after six to eight months. Again, that's how long we're hoping the pilot program put to last. So next steps in feedback. I know this is kind of short and sweet presentation, but the reason for that is we truly do want to get feedback from the commission and the public on this, on this uh, proposal. So the program to begin after the court striping and net installation, weather depending, unfortunately we are ent entering into the winter months, we also have a five-week backlog on the, on the nets, so we're, we're hoping to get that situated uh, soon. Uh, and then we're seeking feedback before rolling it out to the public. So you'll see on there the email for any kind of feedback. 
will be pickleball at cityofsanmateo.org. I know some of you are already familiar with that and have been emailing it. Um, and then we do have a website dedicated to pickleball that people can click on if they're interested in learning more about other opportunities to play pickleball within the city. And so with that, I will turn it back over to Christian. Excellent. Thank you very much. Stephanie, I'm sure you'll get a, a lot of staff time to answer the question of all the questions. So thank you for being here. I'm so glad I am. And thank you for that. Um, so, with that uh, presentation, we now um, have public comment, which I imagine many of you are here for. Um, so, if you are on Zoom, please use the raise your hand function. We will take public comment that is present in the room first. Um, we'll set public comment at two minutes per speaker. And I will ask you know, how many speaking students lists we have. Mm -hmm. And I imagine there are probably a few more people that have yes. to turn in their speaking list. So if you intend to speak on this item, this is item number two on the agenda. Um, please fill out your speaking slip and hand it to you mm -hmm. Okay, anyone else? You need to, to submit a speaking slip now to be able to speak on this item. Anybody, anybody? You will have two minutes to speak. If you do not submit a speaking slip within the next 10 seconds, you will not be able to speak on this event. <laughs> Very good. Okay. With that, okay. Everyone who wishes to speak on this, everyone who wishes to speak on this has now submitted a speaking slip, and I will also ask Ivana how many speaking slips we have. Chair Fields, we do have eight members of the public here in person, and we have one uh, raised in the virtual environment. Excellent. Okay, so let's go with two minutes then per speaker, and by all means. And just for the sake of everyone here, I would just let you know we'll have public comment in the room and then virtually there will be an opportunity for staff to respond if, if warranted, then the commission will be able to ask questions and give comment. Um, we'll have discussion and um, this is a little bit anticlimactic, <clears throat> but nonetheless, um, we're, this is a feedback session. There's no official vote that will take place. Thank you, Chair Fields. Um, just due to the um, attendance here tonight, if you are speaking, if you could just stand where you're at um, and then turn towards the commissioners. Um, first speaker I have is Marsha Hembecker. Marsha, thank you. First of all, I understand that people always like to play, but what are you going to tell the tennis players who are now missing a sport? I try to play on Saturday and Sunday mornings, and there's always people waiting. And I'd like to know what hours are they playing pickleball? And are pickleball players allowed to play on the other courts? Because sometimes pickleball players are on all the courts. Do you get no courts? So is that just one court for the pickleballers? And I have another question. It's like, why do you feel it's okay to take from another sport? Why don't you just build something, you know, on the flat land? Pass that little recreation you have for the kids because a lot is more in the middle. We like make less noise. You know, if you go to the park up in the um, Hallmark Park, they got pickleballers there, and they have it also in ring store, and they have music, and it's so loud. And you try to play tennis, and you can't. You, what's the score? You can't hear the score. You, you can't hear them because everyone is having fun and partying. It's a different sport, and they should have. Party. That's, what, that's what the sport is, but it doesn't belong next to the tennis court. And so, what are you going to tell all the tennis court fitness people? You can't play, and then you also have lessons. There's only four courts in all of these three. The kids in the summer they take two of the courts, so you're only going to give one court to the whole, you know, area. I didn't make my students up. That's all. Thank you. And just for the sake of the room, um, there's a timer that you want to put up on the screen. So oh, so I have 35 more seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I was just talking about it because I thought I had lost it, but now I'm waiting. So, you know, I just feel like build them somewhere else. You know, I totally respect someone who wants to play another sport, but 
you know, tenants unfortunately take a lot of real estate. And a lot of us paid a lot of money so that we can play well. And it's a sport that you think. It's not really that social. It's, it's, it's where you get to improve yourself and you're working on you becoming, you know, a better person. And it, it's just a different thing. And we have nowhere to play now. It's already really hard to get a court. Thank you. So just so everyone knows, the timer will be displayed on the screen. You are in no way obligated to fill all two minutes. <laughs> but when two minutes is hit, please finish your thought and uh, allow for the next speaker. Second speaker we have is Paul Dulek. Paul? Um, my question would be uh, I think you should like have integral players having integral code and tennis player having tennis codes. I I think that everybody should be allowed to play the sport, but why are we only stepping on tennis courts? Why don't we play on on basketball courts at the investor? Why don't we we do it on on, on, on parking lots or because it's at the end we don't need to take tennis courts. I think that it would be wonderful if we could find other ways for the bigger ball players to play and not on tennis courts. I think it will make everybody super happy about this. Thank you. Third speaker, Lisa Malley. Lisa? Yep. I'm up here. Hi. So, hi, my name is Lisa Maley, and I'm within a half mile of Bearsford Park, so I'm excited to see a few pickleball courts, um, because we really are, have a shortage in San Mateo of pickleball courts, for sure. We're driving everywhere else to play. Um, but I, I think I had uh, probably more questions than comments, and my first one is, um, where the courts are laid out, it seems like the side uh, clearances are really small, and there's, there's light posts there. And there's a fence there, and the, the court the court surface doesn't go all the way to the fence. So I really feel like there the potential safety issues, the, how tight that is there. I mean, uh, you know, I think you're supposed to have, uh, you know, like somewhere like seven feet on the side yard, side anyway. Um, was that two minutes or anything? No, no. Oh. <laughs> and then. I was also curious, because it is so tight, like where the racks would be and where people would wait, because usually it's on the court. And so I just was curious about that. Then um, the other one is a, a comment that I, I really, really hope that the nets are like decent because some of them, like Central Park, are, are really, really poor quality. Um, and then I just a thought, maybe consider sound attenuating screen on the side that faces the red bench. That's it. Thank you. Um, and just so everyone understands the process, um, we'll be we collect many questions across the period of time and then we'll be a response after the Okay, the fourth speaker we have is Michelle Zalba. Oh. So she kind of big the same. I have kind of questions on what <coughs> the parameters of the pickleball court. So if they're going to be pool in nets, obviously instead of no permanent nets, because um, they get beat up really, really quickly. Um, and then I have the same question about the looking at the lines on there, what the distance is between, because it does concern me about safety of when you're playing competitively, because you're playing, when you're playing pickleball, you've got four people on that smaller court and the sidelines is pretty close. And then I guess my other question was just eventually, is there, if this program goes well, is there a thought for like permanent court somewhere? Because um, I know for me personally, I get in today, I was like, home and I was like, oh, where I, I gotta go, you know, over to Foster City. I know they had their meeting tonight. They have six permanent courts and they had a meeting to add six more over there so that they'll have 12. I mean, pickleball is definitely a sport that's growing, as you guys know. Um, and I think it would be great in San Mateo that we could have some permanent courts, not things that we have to roll on uh, next. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next speaker we have is Jessica Lee. Murray? Uh, yeah, so um, expanding on everybody else's um, comment about safety, what you're proposing, four courts, you know, two on each side of that net is, is ridiculous. Um, we play currently at the Elks, um, and one pickleball court 
is about the size of one half of a tennis court. And for you to put two courts side by side is ridiculous. I mean, the amount of balls that are going to be carrying from one court to the other, people carrying from one to the court to the other, because you're not just going to stay within your lines. It's going to be a major safety issue for sure. And it's just kind of ridiculous that, you know, if you're trying to squeeze in that much and with the other obstructions that are going to be in there, there's going to be people going to get hurt. Um, you know, uh, Foster City, this population of, what, 30,000? They're going to have 12 permanent courts, and this city has none. And you're looking at a park that has 20-plus acres of space, not all obviously available, but, you know, you can't find a, a possible spot maybe up by the uh, covered uh, picnic area that could be – potentially have um, some permanent uh, permanent uh, courts put in there. Uh, I mean, it's, you know, there's a lot of options that uh, seem, you know, to be, you know, be, be being overlooked and trying to squeeze in, um, in you know, uh, too much in one little spot. You know, we, we have adjusted in our area with, uh, um, you know, the cohabitation of tennis players and pickleball players. You know, we all have our own times, you know, the, the lines, you adjust to them and you you work with it. We, have, we all work with them. So, you know, there is, you know, if it has to have, if it has to be that way, you know, it, it does have an adjustment period and, and we work, you know, we work through it. But with the amount of space that that particular park itself has, I don't see how we can't have a permanent court if that really is going to be an issue because obviously tennis is a very popular spot in that court by itself. So I would not like to see it you know, taken over in, especially in this fashion and, um, you know, try to make the best of both worlds for everybody. Thank you. Next speaker, Tolly Pa. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm here on behalf of Hall. Um I don't know why I, but I got selected to be the ambassador for San Jose for USA, USDA, US Football Association. And I hadn't really done much as an ambassador, but this was one of my jobs is to go to meetings like these. And so I'm here in support of Big Ball, and I've been trying the last a year and a half maybe for COVID to see if they could get um, the park over there in Trovio, uh the one by on Ocean Avenue, to be a dedicated court. There's only two courts on there, but I was told one thing after another, rather than was transitioning and the director of the board of uh, your department. And I think that transition has happened. There's a new director now. And so we're still looking for a pickleball courts, dedicated ones. Because as, as of right now, we are all going to play in Foster City tonight. So we're going to play in Foster City. And Foster City is about to kick us out. Because they have their own people there. A lot of their community are complaining because we're coming in there. And there's plenty of them to take their court. But we come. San Mateo, from San Bruno, from Birmingham, and we also live for it. So uh, I'm here to support that area. I think we get some real dedicated pickleball courts. I know tennis, uh, I used to play tennis myself, but as we saw earlier in the charts, more interests are going into pickleball. And you know, when I when you get to my age, you can't cover the whole tennis court. But we can certainly take a step or two and cover the pickleball courts. So I'm here to support of dedicating some courts here in San Mateo. For us, we need a sport, we need a little bit of tennis, but we just can't. Think of what we've done next. Thank you. Thank you. Please hold your applause. <laughs> next speaker, Tim Jacobson. Sorry, I'm stuck in the back here. Uh, so I'm an avid pickleball player as well. Uh, not the last couple of months, but before that, I was playing multiple times a week. Uh, there's tournament level play, there's a little bit of a misnomer that it's just a social sport, it's not a social sport. There's professional players, there's a professional circuit. It's incredibly mentally intensive, actually. Um, uh, I do want to echo the safety concerns. Uh, when you're playing high level pickleball, there will be injuries if they're too tight. And so, what I would recommend is if you want to do four courts, I would split, uh, I would take up two courts. So, I would do one on this side, one on this side, one on this side, one on that side. Um, I think it would also be fair, given that it's pilot, that you have de designated pickleball times. That way, if people don't show up and wanting to play tennis and it's occupied, I think that might be a fair compromise. Uh, is if we say, you know what, 
Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday are going to be pickleball days on those sports, or maybe uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday at night. Uh, but there's lots of ways to, to slice that, uh, but that might be a way to help the community uh, adjust. I will tell you this as well, whatever courts you build, they will be occupied. You can build a 12-plex in the middle of Barrister Park, and I guarantee you within six months, it will become a mecca. Um, capacity is always an issue for pickleball players. <coughs> I, I don't want to say anything negative or anything that is inflammatory, but I will say this. Whenever I drive by tennis courts, I rarely see people there. But you drive by a pickleball court in the middle of the day, and there will be people there. So whatever you build, it will get it will get built. So uh, the demand is virtually unmoved. Thanks. Thank you. Really Thank appreciate you, you guys uh, doing this. Okay, next speaker, Susan Simpson. Yes, hi. Thank you, Pamela, everyone. Um, so thank you so much for addressing the, the demand for pickleball in San Mateo. Um, I recently wrote a petition to uh, the, the Parks and Rec uh, staff about the Central Park situation. And I know that's not the topic here, but I just want to say that um, 150 pickleball players in San Mateo signed the petition to improve the San Mateo pickleball situation here. So um, uh, that petition actually uh, called for better nets, that kind of thing, uh, permanent courts. Um, and seeing what you're doing at Beresford is definitely very encouraging. You have the population and the demand here in San Mateo. A lot of tennis players are actually switching over to pickleball. Um, also, um, I just wanted to say that um, that petition, it's on change.org, it actually recommended four pickleball courts per tennis court. I know it's a little bit tight, but that's um, after doing quite a bit of research and consulting with coaches in the area, um, four courts per tennis court is about standard. Um, so I just wanted to kind of address that. And also, um, I think this is such a great solution um, to have four pickleball courts to at least try to meet some of the demand here. There's a lot of complaints by pickleball players that there's just not enough courts. We do go to Foster City. We go to Washington Park in Burlingame. We, we try, we're oh looking for courts everywhere. So I think this pilot program is fantastic. And I want to thank you for putting this in place. Um, and I think that was everything I wanted to say. Oh, I know. My last comment is, yes, we would love to have permanent courts away from tennis, if that's at all possible. But I think that would take so much time and so much budget. So this is a great solution for now. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. So we'll move on to the virtual environment. Lane, if you can please unmute yourself. Lane McKenna. Hi, can you, hear me, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, um, I just want to echo a couple of things. Um, the court size issue is a big one. I I just wanted to say that I, I feel for the tennis players, I play both tennis and pickleball, and I believe there are many, many players that still play both. Um, would love to see dedicated court one day at Ocean Shoreview, but I've played tennis on that court, and it is so incredibly uneven. If you want to see a safety issue, go there and try to run on that court. It has mountains of concrete. It would have to be completely redone. Um, but I echo, echo what Mike said. I've played at the Elks and I've played pickleball probably in seven cities in the United States. I have a home in Massachusetts as well. And I have never seen four pickleball courts on one tennis court. That being said, safety issues are a little bit overstated in pickleball. If the space near the back of the court is a little small and you hear people complaining about that in whatever design you use, pickleball players need to adjust, and they do. There, There is never going to be safe pickleball any more than there is safe tennis. People will fall in either sport. To say pickleball could be more dangerous is, to me, absurd. Um so I think just do the best you can. But I just wanted to say, I don't know what the measurements are exactly, but I've never played pickleball um, for pickleball courts to a tennis court. Um, and obviously just, it would be great 
if if a minimum standard was met in terms of what pickleball is today, there is a standard pickleball net and it is not what is at central. We've got to have the minimum national standard for this sport in a pilot program. Um, I love the idea. I guess it was Tim Jacobson, the the idea of trying this, this pilot um, at reduced hours to see who comes, maybe some of the hours where the tennis players typically aren't there. Yes, you can drive by Beresford early in the morning and there's tons of people playing tennis, but then there's times in the afternoon when Here. you're not. That's your Thank you. I would just look at all. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else online? That was it. Sure. So with that, I will close public comment and say thank you to everyone who gave comment uh, and ask uh, Director Debrini if she would like to respond to any of the questions that were heard. Yes, there were, there there were, were many. many. Yes. Um, so um, thank you again, uh, Joanne Debrini, Director of Parks and Recreation. Good to see everybody out. Um, uh, I guess when we initially did the survey, um, I spoke to a lot of people on the phone. Um, about the different possibilities um, uh, for a pilot program. And uh, the majority of the feedback that we received um, was, uh, you know, negotiating whether we had two or four courts. And many of the references from, from the pickleball players was that they would like to see what is at Washington Park and Burlingame replicated here. Um, and that, again, was the majority. There were several people that, you know, uh, did provide feedback about having um, one court on each side as opposed to two because of the more competitive nature and um, giving more space. Um, but we decided to try and um, replicate what Washington Park did, um, where they made one court dedicated um, with four pickleball courts to kind of maximize um, the capacity for use. Um, and we would be dedicating that court for pickleball use with the other three tennis courts dedicated for tennis to try and, you know, even out the, the availability um, of each. So that was kind of the intention. Um, our intention is also to put up netting so that the pickleballs will not cross over into the tennis courts. Um, we do realize that in order to get... Um, nets out on the courts as quickly as possible out at Central Park. We purchased something that was readily available. Um, our more um, uh, sturdy, better quality pickleball nets were quite expensive and on um, back order. And so we have since ordered those and are waiting for those to be delivered um, to be put out at both Central Park and at Beresford Park. Um, we also have ordered the paddle holders for um, people to um, be able to queue up appropriately. So, you know, again, we were trying to address um, some of the interest that we were receiving by trying to get courts lined out at Central and then put together a program that would really work for the majority um, and, and test it out um, out at um, Bearsford. So that's kind of the intention behind what we're proposing. Again, I don't think that there's any perfect solution that meets everyone's exact needs, um, but that's kind of the reasoning um, behind why we're proposing what we are. Um, and so, and we've worked with um, staff that have, um, you know, that work with the community that do our indoor pickleball program um, and provided um, feedback and input about the rules, codes of conduct, um, the spacing, and so um, we really felt like this kind of met all of those needs, um, so that's why the proposal is before you. Um, I don't know if I missed anything. I, I tried to cover as much as I could, but um, if you want to ask any specific questions that I didn't address, happy to answer those. Okay. Thank you, uh, Grant. Um, let's take it back to the Commission. Uh, Commissioner Kiyopi, any comments or questions? Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'd like to thank Stephanie for your presentation and for the Parks and Recreation Department for um, always using data and data and feedback from the community. I really appreciate the response to the community of the community. And it looks like no decision was based on the majority of the rest of the both in terms of um, 60 percent of respondents indicating that pickleball is the favorite sport, but also the, the decision 
on how to structure the courts. We talk for uh, two, um, two pickleball courts on either side of the tennis court. So I really applaud you for doing that. And since this is a pilot, as the one final year, we try it out, let's see this going to work, and then we're going to gather feedback and then make decisions. But one question I have is, um, so if the pilot is successful, then what next? Are you going to expand it at the first court, or are you exploring alternative locations? Actually, I just wrote down permanent courts because I did not address that um, as part of um, the response, so my apologies. There is a, a CIP project on the books to transition our Shoreview tennis court into three permanent pickleball courts. That's a capital improvement yes. project. Yes, sorry, my apologies. <laughs> we can speak in acronyms. Um, <laughs> And then we, um, so yes, there is a plan for permanent courts. Um, it's just there, there was also a need to try and implement, um, you know, pickleball across the city. And so we were trying to do that in a timely, more immediate, um, um, response. Um, I guess what the feedback that we get will help us about our decision making, um, about, you know, whether or not we do explore permanent courts potentially at Beresford. Um, we kind of need to analyze it, if it works, maybe we will transition a tennis court with more permanent stanchions um, that, you know, so that we don't have um, the portable nets. Um, but those, again, are um, other resources, both financial, um, that, that we would need to evaluate before we move in that direction. But I think there are some other enhancements that could be made to that court if it is successful. So pretty much you've answered all the questions that I had. Uh, I think one is one that I hear a lot and it's the noise complaint. So it, is there anything put in the plan for what would potentially be noise complaints for people who live around the, the park who aren't as active and concerned? So one of the reasons we picked that court is because it's right next to the building and it also has a large tree right there. So we're hoping that will muffle some of the sound. That being said, if we get feedback that the sound is an issue for the public or residents, there are things that we can purchase to mitigate that, such as um, that you can put curtains and whatnot on the courts. So as we get feedback, we can address that. But we did intentionally pick that court because it has barriers that we hope will muffle the sound. Excellent. Thank you, Patricia. Uh, Commissioner O'Connor. Um, so, thank you all for coming. It's I, I my friends play pickleball. I played it once at the Bay Club in the city, and I suck. But I would love to play again and get better. Um, <laughs> um, I love that there was 555 residents that participated in the survey, um, and it wasn't surprising to see that 60% of respondents said that they primarily came. Pickleball at Beresford. Um, I think it's fair to for this pilot to allocate 25% of, of the court space, which is one out of the four tennis courts uh, for the pilot. I think it's fair. It's 25%, and 60% of respondents said that they <coughs> primarily think pickleball. I mean, we could have technically done maybe two courts even, right? Um, so I, you know, I, I am very optimistic about the pilot. I think it's going to go hopefully well, um, and. Obviously, use the use the um, the email address if there's any kind of feedback or complaints because of course we'll speak to that. So I'm excited for this. Yeah. Any questions? So excellent. Thank you. Uh, Youth Commissioner Jelmiger, any questions, comments? Um, well, um, so I want to thank you for um, I think you should I could, um, present to us and I think of all and to all of you for coming tonight. Um, I have one question regarding just regarding the rules of the pilot program. So, um, it says here that um, that it, they'll be like posted somewhere. Are there penalties for those who don't follow the rules? <laughs> I don't. The I the one, I'm gonna have to defer to you on it. I don't think there is. No, I don't. Like most drop in recreation, you know, obviously we expect people to follow what is um, posted out there. Um, uh, and of course, it's helpful to have rules posted. So I think that that's.
something that we're interested in and getting at all of our facilities, not just at Bearsburg. Um, and again, we have done our research at Foster City Berlin Game and tried to uh, make something that is um, appropriate for San Mateo and kind of covers all the things that we've heard feedback about. Um, so if you've missed anything or you think that there should be something incorporated that we haven't included, um, you know, we're happy to hear what that might be. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? <laughs> Great question. Um, Vice Chair Wichert. Uh, I, I do have a few questions. So I'll start with a comment. Uh, and first, Stephanie, thank you very much for a clear and concise presentation. Uh, staff, thank you very much for a uh, very thoughtful uh, and uh, well constructed proposal. Uh, I did hear many comments from the players about uh, safety with having four courts on a single tennis court. And I recommend strongly that we take those comments seriously and perhaps revisit whether we would have two or four courts. And if two courts in this pilot could accomplish the pilot's objective. Uh, how is the uh, usage going to be monitored? So I assume you really want to know how popular is this? And the data has to be good. How are you going to capture data? So it will be from community feedback through the emails. Unfortunately, we just don't have the staff and resources to have somebody out there all the time tallying how many people are out there. But again, I encourage the public, if you're having to wait, if you're having issues getting onto a court, anything of that nature, if you email that, it'll be captured, and we can then record that and see what the trends are. And if the more details you provide, the better. And again, we'll be putting posters and everything out there with the email address so that people know how to how to get that information to us. Okay. And we found that community feedback is a relatively accurate measure in the past. I mean, you know, of course, people um, give complaint information probably more often, but when we're actively, like yes, but when we have an active, when we have an active pilot program. I think the people that are interested in the success of the pilot will be more willing to engage and provide us the positive feedback if that's the case. That's what we're hopeful for. I'm hopeful too. And I'm hopeful for the community. Yeah, amazing. Uh, do we know the utilization rate of those tennis courts today? So I've heard two very different comments. Uh, one comment that you can drive by and they're empty, and another that you can never get court of. How well you start these courts today? Do you put a percentage on it? Because we don't have anybody out there taking tallies, it would be hard to have that data. But I will say that we get feedback similar to what we got tonight, where sometimes people can get courts fairly easily, sometimes it's more difficult. It depends on if it's during the weekends, during the prime time, like you saw in the survey, majority of people are using the courts on the weekend, so I imagine it's more difficult. What I can say is that we pulled the reservation numbers for the tennis courts over the past year. And on court four specifically, we only had 33 reservations on that particular court. So kind of gives an indication of how many people are making reservations. And then we only have 50 unique individuals making those reservations over the course of a year. So again, if you look at the population of San Mateo and who's booking the courts, so that's some of the data that we can capture. But as far as specific, I think it's just a matter of the trend of when people are utilizing the courts the most. I would imagine if you drive by, and I've done it as well, in the middle of the day, you don't have as many people out there, but if you get into the evenings and the weekends, it is definitely much busier. Great. Um, what what criteria are staff considering to make a final recommendation after this pilot program is over? Well, it's really going to be community feedback, and I, it's hard to predict that because we don't know what the feedback will be. But the, the criteria that you would be set, I think you go into a pilot saying, Here's the criteria we're going to have, then you'll get feedback and say, okay, here's how it matches against our criteria. I think the first criteria would be access to the courts for what for each sport. So we want to get the feedback. Are tennis players able to play tennis? Are pickleball are players able to play pickleball when they want to play? If through the feedback we're finding that people are able to get to the courts and play when they want to, then I would say that would be a successful measure. Um, if we're getting feedback that it's not working, then that would indicate we possibly need to look at putting courts elsewhere or do something different. So that's well, that would be the main criteria is the court usage and if people are able to access it when they want to. All right. Um, quick one about the nets. 
I, I went by Central Park today, and there were some very nice new pickleball nets out there, very nice aluminum ones. Uh, are these, is that the model? It's no, so those are still temporary nets. Um, we did have some that were completely just, you know, dilapidated and we they're, needed to replace them. So we did, around. we did purchase some temporary ones. The ones that we were purchasing for the pilot program and for central that are the more, not permanent, but they're more commercial quality will be much heavier, much sturdier. Uh, they're still going to be movable and, um, but they're, they're definitely higher quality. Uh, they, they have like, a, I believe a five year warranty. So that's a good indicator. The temporary ones that we have now, I don't believe have any warranty. <laughs> so uh, it's both definitely a commercial quality net that we're looking to purchase. So. Oh, great, because I spoke with many of the players who were out there. They actually liked the, the new aluminum ones he had, where you have even better than that. Yeah, yeah right. much better. <laughs> True. I've heard a lot of comments, and I've read a lot of emails saying, can't you just build new? Uh, courts. Uh, if I remember, don't we have something like a $121 billion unfunded budget? That, uh, to translate, that means there are 120, there's $121 million of projects in parks and recreation that we would love to do that we don't have the funding for. Am I pretty close to that? So, yes, I, I mean, I guess I would, um, just say that um, we definitely see the value in having a, a program for pickleball. Um, and I think that that means many different things. There are indoor options, um, there are outdoor options, there are permanent options, there are temporary options. And we're just trying to meet the need of the community and do it in the most equitable possible way. Um, you know, I think that long term, you know, this is definitely a community priority that we are interested in making sure we address, um, which is why we have a capital improvement project on the books to move in that direction. But I think that, um, yes, there are competing priorities um, within the city um, for funding and resources. And so um, we're just doing the best we can to manage um, meeting the need as immediate as we possibly can. Do you have, actually, could you explain very quickly, the process for deciding uh, the cost and timeline for building courts. As being a private sector person, uh, I'm always surprised, but I understand why public projects have the timeline that they do. Um, what would the timeline potentially be for deciding to build courts and what the cost of building them would be? So there's a community engagement side of determining where you're going to build permanent courts or what you're going to transition from, you know, a tennis court into permanent pickleball courts. Um, so there's the engagement process, which can take six to 12 months potentially in getting community feedback and, and prioritization about the location that you choose. Um, and then there's analysis. Um, I think one of the public commenters mentioned um, the conditions out at Shoreview. And so there are different soil conditions that um, based on the location that we choose, may be more challenging or may need additional funding to address. Um, when you do um, any kind of project, you have to comply with the codes um, in, in addition to access, you know, ABA access and many other things. So there are lighting requirements. So there are a lot of factors that play into renovations or building new um, facilities. And so that's what um, can increase the cost um, of a project and um, extend the scope and the timeline. So um, we're hopeful um, that, um, you know, that we can um, get, get permanent courts built in the upcoming fiscal year. But again, we have other projects that we're working on um, that, you know, we're trying to prioritize and manage. Great, thank you. Um, what I hear continuously uh, from staff is a focus on community feedback. And I, I hear that over and over, and that's fantastic. And it's great to see the public here, the community here, to give that feedback, to see the process work. That's all I have. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Vice Chair. Um, I have a few questions. Um, okay. Come with me on this a little bit, Joanne. Um, where are we on in terms of the timeline for the Central Park renovation and when will the tennis courts 
in Central Park be offline? So we are, there are four phases associated with the implementation of the Central Park Master Plan. We are on phase one. Yep. Um, and we um, are uh, working on a playground upgrades and renovations as part of phase one. Um, that will likely exhaust the funding that we have available in our in park, um, our park in loom and impact fees funding. Okay. So um, there are three more phases um, and they kind of have a domino effect um, of when you address each. Um, but the tennis court um, renovations are um, in conjunction with a parking garage. Um, and so, um, there is no funding to move on to phase two. Okay, three so or there's four no this concern point. of overlap between this pilot program and any changes to the tennis courts at some point. Not this time. Okay. Um, great. Um, okay. I wonder if the reason why 50, there's only 50 unique individuals reserving our tennis courts is because people don't know about reserving tennis courts. Um, and so I, I'd be uh, pleased to hear if we're promoting that a little bit more. Um, I don't think I've ever seen, hey, do you want to reserve a tennis court on social media, um, for example? Um, so while I applaud those 50 people, um, I imagine that there's probably at least 50 more, or maybe 300 more, who would also like to be reserving tennis courts. Um, you know, tennis is uh, a great sport. I personally play tennis. Uh, and have taken uh, tennis uh, instruction through our parks and rec department. Uh, people have brought me to this commission. Um, and I think, you know, the, the feedback around, you know, are the Beresford courts being actively engaged have to do with timing and day of the week. Um, you know, as someone with a day job, I, I, I go to those courts and I usually feel quite full, um, but I imagine, you know, a change in the crop. Um, you know, we have tennis courts at Central Park at Beresford and at Shoreview, and we've heard some of the challenges at Shoreview. Um, if you don't have access to public tennis courts, uh, tennis is an extremely expensive sport, and I do want to be aware of uh, access there. I also just want to say that I know that pickleball has become an immensely popular sport in the last, I think, about a decade or so, um, particularly for uh, uh, to retire in the senior community, but also for people of all ages. Um, and so with that in mind, I think it's really important that we have a, a variety of time slots available um, for pickleball. Um, I, I really just also want to voice that uh, I really dislike that it feels like we're uh, pitting one sport against the other. That's, uh, sorry, I, I'm quite tired. Uh, that sucks. Like, it's just not, it's not how we want um, mm -hmm. recreational programs to exist. And, you know, if, if I think we had our way, we, we'd be able to have uh, less of a scarcity mentality and have, you know, a, a lot of space for tennis and a lot of space for pickleball and really appreciate both of those sports. Um, I think, you know, as, as Vice Chair Witcher kind of started to get at, uh, we have a, a long list of capital improvement projects that, um, you know, at, at this moment are not uh, uh, funded. Uh, so, so thinking about conversion of courts to, to people ball instead of, uh, you know, creating something new is, is sort of a path forward, at least right now. Um, I, I do want to just highlight a couple of things. Uh, I, I, we heard a lot about safety and about um, uh, sort of space and clearance. Um, you know, it sounds like um, four courts, four pickleball courts within the one the tennis court might be okay. But certainly that should be an area that is given close attention. And I guess I'd be curious, Stephanie or Joanne, if we start the pilot program and let's say, I don't know, we get feedback that's, you know, says, you know, there's there's more injuries than we think is appropriate, or not, you know, ideally no injuries, okay? <laughs> but you know, accidents happen, but it feels like, you know. This really is just too close. You know, people are bumping, they're colliding, or bumping into each other, you know, whatever whatever might be happening. Is there a, an opportunity to adjust even during the pilot program? Let's say we're two months in out of, you know, eight months. Two months in, could we say, you know, for the sake of safety, it really should be one court 
on this half of one chord on that, you know, to reduce to two chords. I know that's not ideal, but if that feels safer, would that flexibility exist with the pilot program? Well, I want to start off with the safety and the, the measurements please, and all please. of that, because uh, we do have Cynthia here, who's kind of a pickleball expert, and she actually sent me an email today, which is very timely, specifically talking about the courts and the spaces. Right. And so, I don't know, Cynthia, if you wanted to say a few words about please that please. aspect of it. Well, uh, Not to put you on the spot, but... <laughs> well, USA Pickleball is a national organization that governs the rules and equipment and uh, court dimensions. Um, of pickleball. So I checked their website and they know communities are needed to use existing space. So tennis courts are popular as existing space. And so they do have recommendations on spacing between side by side courts, using tennis courts to uh, on either side. Um, that would give optimum space. Now Tim was talking about advanced players. Um, Sorry, was it, could you put on slide number five? Okay. Just bear with us for a second. Okay. Yeah. There we go. That one. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna kneel. So side by side, uh, there was a recommended recommendation to have these at least eight feet apart. Some communities have it closer because of the tennis court that they're working with, okay? Uh, the, this is a tennis net, and there should be enough swing space of eight feet from the tennis net to the baseline, and then eight feet here. And according to the diagrams that I that I was forwarded to me, there is eight feet here, eight feet here, eight feet, eight feet, eight feet, eight feet. There's six and a half feet here to the fence line, and then to the divider, uh, to the adjacent tennis court. Uh, we do we do have people waiting on the court versus outside the court uh, because the games last about 15 minutes. We want then the next group up to be able to um, access the court. So we don't have them sitting outside. Otherwise, that court is laying open for a few minutes and it just elongates people wait time. So the, the game is played four on, four off. So we'd like to have people waiting close by the paddle queue. It could be here or it could be here, but we do need a waiting area. So it might be tight for people waiting. Uh, and it's tighter in some of the communities. Uh, Berlin Game is one example where they have uh, a paddle rack here. People are coming into the court. And so it is tight for the people waiting. Uh, and they have to be cognizant of the people that are actively playing. So it, it is common and routine to have court spacing like this. And usually we adjust. Uh, I played a half moon bay inside of a room like this, and there's a uh, fire extinguisher that's coming <laughs> out of the wall. So if I get a deep ball coming to me, I just don't play it. You know, players kind of adjust because we're so grateful to have pickleball anywhere. So. Thanks. Yeah, and then well, I was just, really, was very helpful. And I'll just add to that. Our next step is mm -hmm. to go out with uh, Cynthia. Mm -hmm with a public works team actually be on site, mm -hmm. take all these re-measurements and make sure everything is safe for, for the community. I say that you can be. Um, so although we're proposing four courts, I will say if we do get out there and we're taking the measurements and we feel like, oh, maybe maybe it's not gonna work with four courts and we would adjust. To your point of being halfway through the project or a couple months into the project, you know, the lines will be in place. So we would just have to get really creative with how we would manage that. But with the pilot program, the best thing about it is the flexibility and the ability to, to maneuver based on the feedback. So again, I just want to double down on encouraging positive and or, you know, challenging feedback because that's what we need to really know how to move forward long term. Excellent. Um, so just one other thing, um, you know, you mentioned having signage up uh, around sort of the feedback process. I think it's really important for there to be both the signage up with the email address for feedback sort of within the courts, like inside, and also kind of outside so that the neighborhood and the community members are able to yes. to give that feedback just, um, you know, for the sake of, of the audience. Um, we received uh, ahead of time several emails from neighbors uh, with a particular concern around noise, but, but a few other um, sort of concerns as well, and so making sure that there's uh, feedback not just from the players, but also from the surrounding community as well.
Um, I think that's it. Uh, and I will also just say uh, to, to the group, um, please, you know, don't be shy with providing feedback across the pilot program. The pilot program is as good as the feedback it receives. Um, and, um, you know, like I said, I've played tennis at Beresford on several occasions. It's um, sort of self-monitored, self-policed, one of which is wrong, but the are saying, uh, quite well. Um, and I expect uh, no less from fellow Zamateans uh, around football. Thank you. Yes, we have a question. I want to add one. Yes, please. Um, so also to gather back to the commissioner point, as much data as possible, not only just the email, but maybe some QR codes, the QR code can go to the survey and can immediately fill out the survey. Because I'm a horrible email person and I'm not gonna email anybody about anything. Mm -hmm. But I will do a QR code survey that's just right on thing and I think that will help people immediately kind of get the stimulation back. Also if we can also find any passive ways for monitoring. I don't know if like um, you know, there's a timer, you know, what you do when you play um, uh, chess or something, where people can time in, time out, so there's some passive way of knowing how many people have come in out of it, maybe even a clicker like the old turn spells. Um, but let's find ways where we can get passive feedback because um, I'm a little lazy too and I don't know what it's saying. Yeah, I think, you know, just to add on what Commissioner Trapp is suggesting, you know, even a very simple survey, you know. Day and time you're there. Have you, you know, have you been here? You know, this is your first visit, or you know, have you been here multiple times before? You know, just some some basic data collection. You know, do you live in San Really, like five questions, and then an option for you know additional comment. Um, I also just wanted to add that I would love to see recreation instruction um, uh, around pickleball, particularly as it's a growing sport with a lot of popularity. Um, you know. We offer classes on so many things, um, and I, you know, especially as um, when this pilot concludes, um, if moving forward to a more permanent pickleball um, is the recommendation, which I will be very surprised if it's not. Um, but if if we're really looking at more permanent pickleball, thinking about incorporating that into recreation classes as well, and instruction. You know, instruction is not going to be part of this pilot, but um, thinking towards the future. Um, it would make sense to and I will note we do have some pickleball classes Excellent. now, but there's always but opportunities to look at as, um, as we invest more. Okay, with that, um, I will remind everyone that there is no official uh, vote around this um, topic, but uh, just this process of, of questions and feedback from you, the members of our, our great community, and my fellow commissioners. And I will say thank you to my fellow commissioners for all your thoughtful comments and questions. And I will ask, are there any reports or announcements? Just a couple of things. Um, our rec guide, our winter rec guide went online today. So um, please, um, they'll be in your mailboxes soon um, in a couple of weeks. But um, our winter programs um, and camps and um, information are available online. Um, and two other exciting things that are upcoming for the month of um, November and December. Uh, San Mateo on Ice Rink will be coming and opening um, November 15th out at Central Park Fitzgerald Field. I'm sure as some of you drive by, you've seen it being set up. So that will be operating November 15th to January the 12th. And then our Winter Wonderland holiday event um, will be happening at Central Park on Saturday, December 7th from 4 to 6 p.m. So I hope to see all of you there. And do any of my fellow commissioners have an announcement? Anybody, anybody? Seeing none with that, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming.